Hello friends, this video on some natural phenomena part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about seismograph. So what is seismograph? It is a device to record the seismic waves produced by earthquakes on the earth's surface. Now whenever an earthquake takes place, what happens? There, there is a lot of movement which takes place on the earth plates. Now when the movement happens with the earth plates, there is a lot of movement on the surface of the earth as well. Now these movements are recorded and a wave pattern is obtained. So these wave patterns are called seismic waves. So anything associated with earthquake, they are, the term seismo is used for that. For example, seismograph, seismic waves, seismic zones. So this word is used for that. Okay, so due to this movement of the earth, the waves which are produced, these are called seismic waves and we make a note of these waves. Now looking at these waves, we find out the amplitude of the waves. Now by now you all know what is amplitude of a wave? Yes. So once you know the amplitude, so with that you can get the values on the y-axis of Richard scale. So let us see how exactly a seismograph looks like and how it works. So this is a seismograph as you can see here. Now what is the purpose or what is the aim of having a seismograph? So the purpose is to accurately measure the motion of the ground. Whatever motion is taking place on the earth's surface, so we have to accurately measure that motion. Now during an earthquake, tall buildings, bridges, everything starts shaking. So so from where should we connect the seismograph so that accurate measurement of the ground motion can be taken. So seismographs are always connected to the bed rocks because bed rocks are comparatively more stable. So they are just moving from one place to another because if we connect it to buildings or something they are going to collapse and they are just going to end. So our seismographs will not give a better value. So we connect them to the bed rocks. But at the same time, we do not want the instrument itself to shake a lot because if the seismograph itself is shaking too much, then again the accuracy of the measurement will not be that great. So in order to make sure that the instrument is heavy enough to remain stable, what do we do? We hang a large weight from a rope. So if you look at the construction of a seismograph, you see there is a strong support here. And from this support, there is a string to which is hung a pendulum bob. So this is basically a weight just to give uh, some weight to the seismograph so that it is stable enough not to so that it doesn't shake a lot during an earthquake. Now to this pendulum bob is attached a pen. So here you can see this is a pen and to this pen is attached a paper. Now what happens is as this bob moves now whenever the earth is making movements so this pendulum is since it is hanging freely so it will vibrate right. Now as it vibrates the pen is going to uh, write down on this paper so we are going to get the the pen writing on the paper due to the movement of the pendulum bob right now this paper is present on a rotating drum as you can see here so this rotating drum will continuously keep on rotating so the new paper will continuously keep on coming in so at the end of it what we will get is a long sheet of paper with these kind of uh, images being drawn by the pen and how are these images or how are these waves drawn due to the movement of the pendulum bob. So all that we need to do in a seismograph is a heavy weight in the form of a pendulum bob is kept so that the seismograph itself is comparatively stable. So it, if you look at the arrangement, the arrangement or the concept of seismograph is pretty simple but with this we can actually get the pattern of the seismic wave. So this is seismic wave and this wave from looking at this wave you can actually amplify this wave to find out the amplitude and this is used to give the values of the y axis on the richer scale. Now once you have these values, you can get the values on the x axis because they are nothing but log to the base 10 of the value on the y axis. So that is how you can actually calculate the magnitude of an earthquake. So whenever an earthquake takes place, the seismograph will give you the, the, the seismic wave 
From here, you will get the amplitude and once you get the amplitude, you will be able to calculate the x-axis on the Richter scale. Now, in Richter scale, if you see, it clearly tells you that what value of uh, or what magnitude of an earthquake is actually dangerous. So you see, as long as uh, the value is 3 or less than 3, it is very minor, which is not even felt by people. When it goes to 5 or 6, it is like a moderate earthquake, which is felt. You can actually feel the shaking, but it doesn't cause any destruction of life or property. But as the value goes beyond 7, 7, 8 or 9. So the intensity of the earthquake increases, the destructive power of the earthquake also increases and it can cause huge loss of life and property. So basically this is how we measure uh, earthquakes. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.